Sniper Elite 5 is pretty damn close to bringing Rebellion's franchise full circle. It started off, as we all know, in the bombed out ruins of Berlin at the end of World War II for the first game and its sequelized remake. And then Sniper Elite 3 had to find some new ground, so it stepped all the way back to the conflict in North Africa, 4 then continued that campaign up into the Mediterranean and through Italy, and now 5 sees Carl Fairburn sent into France in the days and weeks surrounding D-Day. The precarious D-Day landings might feel like they should be the crux of the game's main narrative push, but Sniper Elite has always mixed a little bit of fantasy in with its depictions of World War II. No, it's nowhere near the alt history shenanigans of the Wolfenstein series, but Fairburn is now on the trail of Obergruppenführer Moller and his Operation Kraken, an audacious plan by the Nazi hierarchy that could change the face of the war. Don't worry too much though, because I'm sure that Fairburn is going to sort all of that out. For our hands-on time with the game, we were dropped into its second mission, with Fairburn having hooked up with the French Resistance and going on a reconnaissance and intel gathering mission at a lavish French chateau that has been occupied. It's a sprawling open environment in a style that will instantly feel familiar to players of Sniper Elite 4, a game which dramatically expanded the scope of what the series could do with its level design. Right from the off, you have three clearly defined routes through to the mansion, whether that's deciding to go right up the gut and the main heavily defended gate, or sweeping through the more lightly guarded ancillary buildings off to one of the sides. Once you manage to get inside, it's then a case of sneaking through the mansion's hallways, ducking into rooms, searching for clues, and trying to find a way to get into Moller's office to get a peep at his plans. While a frontal assault is obviously an option, in truth you still want to play this game as a stealth action game. Since the third game in the series you've been able to use loud noises to mask your sniper shots, whether that's something sort of in the environment, like having regular planes flying overhead or artillery barrages, or by creating audible cover for yourself by finding a motor to sabotage so that it constantly cracks and sputters to mask your sniper shots. Alternatively, you can holster your sniper rifle and get up close and personal with a silenced pistol and round takedowns. That side of the game remains absolutely true to form, but Rebellion has found ways to add, expand and tweak the gameplay. In particular, there's now non-lethal options, which I must say are a little bit oddly juxtaposed with the setting. I mean, you're not taking out hapless chefs and waiters to get backstage like in Hitman. Carl is a commando and this is a theatre of war. Either way, you now have a non-lethal melee option, and you can find things like wooden bullets that will incapacitate enemies, so you can actually go through some levels not taking out anyone at all. Rebellion has also changed the base loadout package, and there's an introduction of far more customization with more rare and experimental equipment. Most notably, the trusty well rod has been sent back to the armory, but there's still silenced options. Given that this is a stealth game, the fact that silencers can be applied to guns is a big deal. Yes, they were decidedly non-standard during World War II, but they were still a technology of the time. Still, it does feel a little bit odd to have an M1911 with a silencer on the front instead of that well rod. You also have things like subsonic ammunition to let you fire without the telltale sonic boom that would give away your position, so you do have quieter firing options and don't just have to shack up in a vantage point and take enemies out from afar. Speaking of pistols though, there's a new ability to aim down sights for guns that are not sniper rifles. This means that you have the iron sights for a pistol which could potentially turn this into a bit more of a first person shooter experience if that's what you're going for. One other new action game centric tweak is the addition of the Gears of War style active reload system. So if you time your button presses right, you can very quickly reload your gun instead of having to wait to go through all the way through the whole animation. But the weapon customization goes far, far beyond that with the ability to swap out stocks, receivers, scopes and sights, all of which affects the core handling of the weapon, its power, rate of fire and mobility while aiming. There's new workbenches within the game world that you can visit to change up your equipment on the fly and change your playstyle. There's also plenty of weapons that you can pick up and find within the level, grabbing a different rifle in a sniper nest or picking up a gun off an enemy soldier that you've just knocked out or stabbed in the brain, whichever one you choose. These now have much more limited ammo, so when you run out, you're basically back to your regular guns. 
As well as weapon customization, Carl himself can also be customized. You've got an expanded experience and skill unlocking system, so you can push Carl's own innate abilities in a particular direction to match your style of play as well. I'm really looking forward to playing more of Sniper Elite 5. I've always had a soft spot for this series and it's slightly campy World War II action. And it's been great to see how each game in the series has evolved and grown. In terms of the gameplay, Sniper Elite 5 seemingly leans towards making much smaller, more iterative changes to the formula, refining the much broader changes that came in Sniper Elite 4. But it's been a good five years since that game and there's a new plot that I cannot wait to foil. Thankfully, I won't have to wait too much longer. Sniper Elite 5 is coming out across Xboxes, Playstations, and PC on the 26th of May this year. We'll be back with a review of the game in due course, but that's all that we've got for this particular video. Hopefully you've enjoyed what you've seen, so before you go, I'd like to ask you to do all of the usual YouTube things. Click the like button, the share, the bell, the subscribe, and hopefully we will see you again soon. Goodbye! Hands are fast. Let's bust some tanks. <laughs>